Hi guys, this is Ryan Saronich for Saxophone Central. Today we're at Concerthus in beautiful Stavanger, Norway, and I'd like to talk a little bit about Thea Wani's pressure plate set for the mouthpieces. <laughs> It's often that I get asked by people in the saxophone industry about Thea Wani mouthpieces. Some people try them out and they really love them immediately. And sometimes a lot of people play them and they find them to be really good and easy to play, but maybe the sound isn't quite right. And I know that we've all maybe had this issue with various mouthpieces over time. But Thea Wani has kind of developed a way that they can modify a little bit of the sound coming out of the mouthpiece by changing their pressure plates on the bottom of the mouthpiece here. Now the pressure plate just fits in on this ligature right here. It screws in very easily and you can kind of change them in and out to find one that works for you. And although the changes are very small, much like a lot of other products available in the saxophone industry, you can kind of use things like this to modify your sound just a little bit to get it closer to really what you're hearing ideally in your head as a saxophonist. Being an owner of the Awani mouthpieces for almost 10 years, I'm surprised that I hadn't experimented with the Shiva 2 metal mouthpiece with the different pressure plates as I had on a lot of other of my mouthpieces. The biggest change that I've heard in these over the years was in my baritone sax mouthpieces. Initially, I got the Durga 1 almost 10 years ago, I think it was, and although the mouthpiece felt very good and the tone was almost right, there was something about it that was a bit off. The brass plate that was with it felt just a little bit thin to me, so I moved into the copper plate or the heavy copper plate as I think they used to call it and it completely changed all the characteristics of the mouthpiece and it made it from being a mouthpiece that I kind of enjoyed to one that I really loved. In turn when I got the new Durga Berry mouthpiece I did the same thing with the pressure plates and the difference was a little even more drastic I think. The Oani has five different pressure plates available for the mouthpieces. They come with this gold lacquer or maybe brass one and they also have available here a steel pressure plate, copper, a vintified plate, and a titanium plate. So I sat down this afternoon for about an hour to just record each of these pressure plates on my saxophone. And the setup that I'm using is a P. Moria 600 XJ unlacquered tenor saxophone with no high F sharp. I'm using a Legere Reed and a Theowani Shiva 2 in metal. Now typically I use this gold lacquer pressure plate on my ligature, but it was kind of fun to A, B everything today with all of these pressure plates that we recorded. So the gold lacquer is typically what comes on these mouthpieces. It's a very middle of the road pressure plate. It's a little bit bright. It's uh, decently full bodied sounding, but that might not be quite what you're looking for. So the steel plate here is supposed to be very vibrant and alive and a little bit on the bright side. So then we have the copper plate, which I think they used to call the heavy copper plate. This has a little bit more dampened overtones and allows the core sound to be in focus. Then we have the vintified plate, which is really warm and dark sounding, but still has a lot of overtones in it. And then finally, now the one that I have on my mouthpiece today that I think I'm gonna keep on there and test a little bit more actually, is the titanium plate. The titanium plate is big, bold, very open, free-blowing, and uh, has a lot of overtones in it too. I felt like my sound kind of just opened up a little bit uh, all the way through the tonal spectrum. Experimenting with the pressure plates is something that I think every player that owns a Theowani mouthpiece should do, just for the ability to fine-tune parts of the mouthpiece that you may want to change just slightly to fit your sound or perfect your sound. Anyway, if you'd like to take a second and head over to saxophonecentral.com, I'm putting an article with these plates about kind of the changes that I experienced with them, and I'm gonna post the high def audio files that are completely dry, no reverb, no EQ, no nothing, so that you can hear the difference and or see the difference for yourself. These pressure plates are available directly from Theowani, and there's a link in our article directly over to the page so that you can check them out for yourself. If you get the plates and you end up experimenting with them with your mouthpiece, let us know what you found the differences were between your original plate and the plate that you may have chosen in the process of checking all of these out. Instead of just giving you a player's perspective about the differences on these plates, I invited my audio engineer friend Andrea Pellegrini to give his two cents. 
Andrea is the front of house sound engineer for Brit Floyd, who I'm on tour with, but his resume includes some of the biggest names in the world of a lot of different genres. Comparing the four uh, pressure plates, I have to say that the differences are not absolutely big, but they have four different characteristics, especially in the harmonic content. I mean, uh, just outside the proper tone of the instruments. So um, I see the gold locker is very flat on the mid range, which is the proper range of the instruments, but they have a very um, quite heavy slope on the harmonics. So it means a, probably a more focused sound of the instrument. More harmonics gives you uh, more um, possibilities to uh, modeling your tone. So probably a higher frequencies response may uh, give you a wider palette of sounds uh, on the high range. Same stuff for the low ones. Firstly, let's look at the frequency reading on the brass plate, which is what comes typically on most the Iwani mouthpieces. You can see that mine has been kind of beat to hell for being on there for a lot of years. We'll use this as a bit of a benchmark to A, B all the other plates against so that you can see the differences. The process of changing your plates on your mouthpiece is a very simple process. It only takes just a minute or two and you can use the tools that come with either your mouthpiece or the pressure plate kit. The first of these plates that we're going to test against the gold lacquer plate will be the steel plate. Quoting from the literature that comes with the plates, it says, Our stainless steel creates a vibrant and alive industrial sound. <laughs> Comparing the gold locker uh, to the steel one, the very first thing that pops in my eyes is a little more spike around 3K, something like that, 2.5, 3K, that in the saxophone usually is, it could be called as the top end part of the, of the frequency response. So probably the, the, the steel one has a little more uh, spike, more uh, bite on the very top end. I also can see that the slope starting around 3-4k on the steel one is way softer so it might be add a little harmonic content on the high part of the harmonics and at the same time it looks to have like a little less harmonic content on the low end. Up next, we test the copper plate against the gold lacquer plate. This is actually the plate that turned my Durga 1 baritone mouthpiece I was talking about earlier into something that was super playable for me. The literature says our solid heavy copper dampens overtones to allow the core sound to be the focus. Sound is more like leather or strap type ligature. <laughs> Comparing the copper to the gold lacquer one, we see that the differences are not that big. We just have a little spike uh, around 3K as the steel one, but with a different slope on the high frequencies, which are kind of nicer and slow, they go slowly down, uh, and a little more uh, harmonic content on the bottom end. So would you say particularly for 
the both the steel and the copper that there might be a little bit of a changed definition in that two and a half to three K range? Probably it just a little more about the warmth of the tone itself. Up next, we put the Vintified plate up against the gold lacquer plate. This is one that I do use when I need a slightly darker sound on my mouthpieces. The literature on this says a warm and dark tone with wonderful color, overtones, and core to the sound. The Vintified looks a little more different compared to the three other ones uh, because it's definitely more flat, uh, especially in the range between uh, 60 Hz up to 300. It's kind of more compressed. Uh, it, it also has the same spike around 3 kilos, but at the same time it's very similar to the Gold Lacquer one and even the harmonic uh, content on the top end has a very 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 slow uh, slope so it looks like a richer one last up is this titanium plate that i've really been enjoying the literature says big bold open free and fully alive sound with tons of character has extremely resonant qualities which produce a lot of overtones <laughs> The titanium one has a wider gap around the 300s, uh, which means on the saxophone a little more focused tone. Um, you know, 2 to 400 are usually the noisy frequency on the saxophone that sometimes you need to scoop a little bit. These are trouble spots. Yes, trouble spots. So um, this gap means you know more uh, um, a more directional sound to the instruments and at the same time i am notice a very wide spike on the same area around three k's but with a wider q as we call it so the the, the width of the frequency is wider on this one at the same time the harmonics response on the high part is very it has a very slow and gentle decay, which it means it's a definitely a rich tone on the high frequencies. I see. So if it were more jagged, that would be a less rich sound? Yes, definitely. Just for a reference, this is how the four new plates stacked up against each other. You can definitely see that there are differences, but they are very small. So just a little bit of an update to the Theowani pressure plates. So over the last couple days, I've used different pressure plates for every gig, kind of trying to test out what fit best for me. And like I mentioned earlier, I used to use the gold, the it's probably gold lacquer pressure plate on tenor saxophone for the show and for a lot of years. 
Well, I actually made the decision to switch over to the titanium one. It's just a little bit brighter on stage and it cuts through a little bit more for me, but it's also still pretty full bodied as you saw probably by the, the EQ curve on the video that I'm posting with along with this. Want more content just like this? Please subscribe and like this video.